ask any man of God ask any businessman ask anyone who has experienced the grace and the glory of God in their lives their ministries and their endeavors if they are to be honest with you they may not even be able to articulate the basis of such investment of God's attention upon their lives. I'm giving you the theological explanation that there is something about their work with the Holy Ghost that has brought them to a perpetual state of brokenness. Brokenness is not self-condemnation. No, not at all. Brokenness is a state of awareness. Was this not what happened to Isaiah in chapter 6? When Isaiah beheld the glory of God, here's what he said. He said, woe is me for I am undone. He said, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. As a result, he was now ushered in to experience the mercy of God. A, one of the, the cherubs, the seraphs, had a live coal and he touched him and he says, your iniquity has been taken away from you. Believers, I don't know about you, but you see, this man standing before you is a product of God's mercy. When I hear people brag and celebrate their achievements and everything, I stand back and I know that in all fairness, would I be honest with myself to credit the results on my life today to my performance connection? Is that true? Would I be honest? It's not just because I've read it in the Bible. I am aware of the limitation of my state sociologically, etc. You see that? Be careful. Lest when you build houses. Deuteronomy chapter 8. It was a warning. When everything is in place for you. That you will say my power and the might of my hand. That is the side effect of success. That it is possible that when you succeed and the spotlight is on you, it becomes embarrassing to credit the honor to another. There is something about men and our each and desire to be celebrated. Why would I turn the attention of the world to me, we say, and now suddenly turn it to another? Huh. Let me tell you this. There are men and women that will rise in these end times. You will add them up and see that as an equation, they don't add up. You will look for where the wow factor is and not find it. It's hidden in the mercy. The mercy of God invested in their lives at the instance of their brokenness. You will see entrepreneurs rise that when you sit and talk with them, you will feel you are wasting your time. Yet you cannot deny the results that come from their lives. Because behind their frailties, there is the jealousy of a great God backing them. You will see this in preachers. You will see this in ordinary men. You will see this in mothers. You will see this in children. Listen to me. When you understand the entire theology of God's mercy, then you will now know how to be merciful to others. You will know what to look for also in administering mercy. So no one just blackmails you spiritually. Show mercy. No. I must, like God, find brokenness. If I do not see brokenness, there is no point communicating mercy. I was glad when they said unto me, the Bible says, let us go to the house of the Lord. You only find this in the house of God, the wisdom of God that strengthens us. Now as a leader, as a businessman, you know what to find in administering mercy to your people. Perfection is exhausting and unnecessary. Search for brokenness. Among the many factors that you put as your basis for lifting people, if you do not find the component of brokenness, do not waste your time. A genuine, broken, and a contrite heart is what God looks for. Question. When we make the altar call, why do we oftentimes ask those who have admitted to stand up to come and stand before everyone and make that declaration? Does it really make any difference spiritually if they just sit back there and you say, well, here is this prayer. Go home and go and say it between you and God. Does it stop him from hearing? 
all that they do that entire activity is just a way of helping them to establish their brokenness before god so they come and stand are you ashamed of him to stand before men hmm. you see why that coronation happened for jesus it was not just because he was lord find out what happened to him philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 puts it very expressly it says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus and then it says verse 6 as we wrap up it says who being in the form of god taught it not robbery to be equal with god what happened watch this he made himself of no reputation watch the protocol now and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself here it is and became obedient unto death now you understand our concept of death first separation before cessation of living as far as the three-dimensional realm is concerned even the death on the cross the death of the cross is how cursed people die wherefore because that condition of brokenness was established do you know that when jesus walked upon the earth he never called himself father jesus he acknowledged perpetually that there was an authority above him even as jesus he was comfortable being called son messiah not father i can of my own self do nothing as the word he did not think it was an embarrassment that even though his original name was and still remained the word and that the bible says without him was not anything made that was made yet he would say i can of my own self do nothing by reason of that brokenness please back to philippians chapter 2 it says wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him an office that is above and greater than any other office and then it says at that name every knee should bow of things in heaven things in earth and things under the earth and every tongue should confess that that jesus who was the christ at his baptism has now become lord the office that was given to him is lord the absolute owner so the psalmist by the spirit says the earth is the lord's and his fullness thereof he sits in that office not just as christ but as lord this was the message of peter on the day of pentecost let it be known to you that that same jesus whom you crucified has today been exalted as lord and christ i show you a mystery and a deep secret in the spirit behind the mysterious rising of many behind the investment of god's jealousy and power and grace upon seeming people who are seemingly not qualified in all your diligence in all your being productive in all your contending for knowledge in all your executions remember that there is a state of inadequacy in man that our very best is still short i believe in productivity i believe in diligence no visionary leader will use the subject of god's mercy to produce laziness out of his people no the subject of god's mercy if not understood will make it look like there is no need to be productive there is no need to submit yourself to learning and all of those things i told you that the mercy of god is a system of advantage that is based on the awareness that the best of man has been examined with time and it has still been found to fail yesterday i wrapped up with a scripture in john 21 the bible says that how peter said i go a fishing frustrated by the transition of jesus or the death of jesus he said so i don't do two zero since i lost being a disciple let me go back to what i was doing i go a fishing and they said we go with thee the bible says and they went forth and entered into a ship immediately and that night they caught 
was peter a good fisherman help me was his boat fine was his net well where do you find fish so he was in the right location with the right tools having the right mind yet no results there are times everything is right yet no results if you want to find fish you should be at sea if you really need to catch fish you should have a functional net there are times oh businessman there are times oh man of god there are times oh family man that from the standpoint of men's system everything is in place yet you will surprisingly not catch fish at that point you do not need your skill again leave the boat and look for jesus jesus looked at him and said little children have you any catch you peter would have been angry to say i'm older than you little children your age mates were killed already so everybody who was older than jesus was older than him by at least two years he said remember his old his age mates were killed now he's calling peter who is married little children peter said i accept i am a child because if i'm not a child i should understand the dynamics that will be able to produce fish and since i am that incapacitated your verdict about me will not be taken for an insult i accept he was ready for fish he said cast your net to the right side since you passed that test and you're not insulted by my assessment of your weakness cast your net to the right side the bible says he cast his net to the right side and all of a sudden he caught fish spare me a minute or two as we wrap up because someone came to church wondering lord i love you i've been around church remember the elder son i've been around you what is it about me that i've been in this church for five years and i may not have that much testimonies a stranger comes in and before the sermon is already crying and he leaves back with his healing he leaves back with his breakthrough two weeks after wafbeck is returning with with a buffet of testimonies i show you the missing link could it be that you have not understood that the best of man is still limited?